Thank you very much and good afternoon. Thank you to all of you for your interest in this online seminar. In the next 15 minutes, I will provide an overview of our work on the options for the political phase of the global stock take. Um, so next slide, please. Um, yeah, let's just check. I, I can see the slides now and we can move to the overview slides. As you can see, the presentation will start with an introduction of the political phase of the global stock take. Then I will address options for the process of the political phase and also options for the outputs of the global stock take. I will then close uh, with conclusions and with some open questions and challenges uh, for the political phase, which we could then discuss after the presentation. Next, please. So when we speak of the political phase of the global stock take, it is not only what will happen at COP28, but also political events uh, during this year, then also the preparation steps for the consideration of outputs, and then as a third part, uh, the consideration of outputs itself at COP28. Frederick already mentioned most of what you can see on the slide here in his introduction. So as you can see, it's international meetings, then it's the very specific steps which are uh, conducted by the high level committee and by the chairs of the subsidiary bodies, as you can see on the slide. And then what will, <clears throat> what will be very important will be the, that the elements for the consideration of outputs uh, will be developed during a workshop in October. And then in the end, we will have, have high level events during uh, COP28 which will again be chaired by the high-level committee. Next slide, please. Now let's look at possible options for the process of the political phase. What we did, we did not look in detail into various steps over time. Rather, uh, we addressed uh, how the political phase could be structured, uh, namely whether it could be structured by thematic area or structured by sector. So the main thematic areas under option A, those would roughly correspond to the three goals of the Paris Agreement, mitigation, adaptation, and finance flows. Under point one mitigation, we also included the social and economic consequences of response measures. That's because it was decided in Katowice that these would also be taken into account and they fit well into the mitigation component. Similarly, for addressing, minimizing, and averting loss and damage. Here in our option one, we would include them under point two, adaptation. And finally, uh, we have the finance flows, uh, but actually the wording in article 14 of the Paris Agreement is that we speak of means of implement implementation and support. Now under this option A, there would be specific guiding questions and then meetings and also tailored outputs separately for each of the three thematic areas. Now, if you look at option B, here the political phase uh, would be organized by sector, so such as energy, transport, industry, agriculture, forestry, or, or similar. Next slide, please. So what we looked at was uh, specific functions uh, and whether the options would fulfill them. So the first function uh, which should be fulfilled in the consideration of output would be the engagement of non-party stakeholders. Um, so they are specialized non-party organizations focusing on the main thematic areas and also non-party organizations really focusing on specific sectors. That's why we find uh, that the engagement of non-party stakeholders works well under both options. If you look at the next uh, three functions, uh, we can see that in uh, all three cases, option A in our view works well, whereas option uh, B um, may not work that well. And that's mainly because topics like equity, the high level participation, and also the technical phase, they are very cross-sectoral and therefore it may be a bit more difficult uh, if a sectoral approach is chosen. 
Then if you look at the third entry from the bottom, that's about the link to other processes under the Paris Agreement. So we have the mitigation work program, we have the work program on adaptation and also a dialogue on finance flows. So these other related work programs, um, these correspond roughly to the main thematic area, areas and not really uh, to the sectors. And hence it may be difficult uh, for this function uh, to fulfill it uh, if option B, the sectoral approach is chosen. On the other hand, if, if you look at the last two entries, uh, there we consider that option B would make it easier to fill these functions. So it's because like commitments in NDCs and also inter international cooperation that's often structured according to sectors rather than thematic areas. Next slide, please. So let us now focus on the outputs of the global stock take. We considered several options. So option one would be that the outputs are included in the cover decision of CMA5, so of, of the COP in December. Then option two would be a political declaration that would be at ministerial or head of state and government level, and it could be referenced in the cover decision. Option three would be high level sectoral commitments those could be made by progressive parties and also by non-party stakeholders and they could be made in the context context of campaigns by the COP presidency or also in the context of the climate action agenda. Then there could also be specific CMA decisions on the global stock take. Um, there could be one single CMA decision or there could also be several such decision, decisions. And finally, there's the option of a technical annex, uh, which contains detailed information. And this information, again, it could be organized either by sector or by thematic area. And it's important to note that those five options, uh, they are non-exclusive and several of them can be combined. Next, please. So we expect that, that the outputs contain certain statements. Um, they're shown here in the blue row. Um, we have here possible statements on the collective progress, statements on the need to increase ambition, and also guidance on increasing ambition and implementation. So uh, let's have a look at how the various options of the outputs um, would be useful to convey those statements. If you look at that column for the collective progress, uh, a cover decision could make good statements about the collective progress, but also more detailed information could be found in specific CMA decisions or in a technical annex. If you look at the next column, the need to increase ambition, again, that could be addressed in the cover decision, but maybe more prominently in a political declaration uh, or in high level sectoral commitments. And finally, when it's about specific guidance on increasing ambition and implementation, that's something more for the, for the more detailed documents like specific CMA decisions or for a technical annex. Next, please. So in this slide, I am showing an example how the options for the outputs could be combined. So at the highest level, there could be a cover decision or the high level sector commitments or a political declaration. In this example, so in our view, a good way of combining elements would be to combine the high level sector commitments, then specific CMA decisions and a technical annex. So that's a way um, of conveying really uh, a lot of information. If, it's, if a cover decision is used, that would convey only very high level information or the political declaration, but the sector co commitments plus more detailed uh, outputs, that would be uh, a combination with, which could really convey a lot of contents uh, out of the global stock date. Next slide, please. Uh, so to summarize uh, what I just um, showed you, the political phase of the global stock date could be structured by thematic area or by sector and both options are quite well suited for this purpose. The outputs of the global stock take could consist of CMA decisions, 
of a political declaration or sectoral commitments, and they could be supported by a technical annex. A combination of these elements may be most suitable for conveying specific practical guidance on enhancing ambition and implementation. Next, please. So that was uh, just a quick overview of what we addressed in this paper, but of course there are many questions which go beyond what we addressed there. And I'm just listing a few questions uh, which I would be interested also like discussing this afternoon and also hearing your views. This would be the question of inclusion of non-party stakeholders. Then the question how to maximize the impact of the outputs. Uh, which steps can be taken and concluded ahead of COP28? I would be also interested in your views of the two options which we showed, whether to follow the thematic or the sectoral option, and then which type of information would go into technical annex and at what level of detail. And finally, how to co coordinate the political phase with other processes, such as the mitigation and uh, adaptation related work programs uh, under the CMA. Next slide and last slide, please. So with this slide, I would like to thank you for your attention. You can see again the authors of, of the paper and, and colleagues who contributed to this work. And I would, I'm now looking forward to the discussion. And with this, I'm handing over to Wolfgang Obergassel, who will moderate the discussion.